Welcome to Going Green. Some of the world's biggest companies are now issuing sustainability reports in a bid to cut their carbon footprints. But is it just PR or is there real commitment? Joining me now to discuss is the CEO of Syngenta, Eric Fierwald. Hello, Martina. Nice to be here. Eric, climate change obviously poses a lot of challenges for agriculture. So what is Syngenta doing to tackle it? Well, first of all, you're absolutely correct about the challenges. 30% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions come from the agriculture food value chain. So we cannot tackle climate change as a world without tackling the, the agriculture food challenge. So what Syngenta is doing is we're, we're, we're developing products that enhance the ability of farmers to grow more food with less greenhouse gas emissions. We're training farmers. We've trained 23 million farmers around the world on sustainable practices. We're measuring the performance of reference farms all around the world and demonstrating that with the right products, the right technologies, the right practices, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by more than 24% with our current capabilities. But then we're also working across value chains with partners and things like the Farm to Market Alliance in Africa, where we're helping not only farmers themselves, but creating a value chain so that they can sell their products, they can access the right technologies, and be more successful, and, and, and be economically successful, but also take care of the planet. That all sounds very good. Eric, um, if we look at some numbers, right? Uh, Syngenta spends about 1.4 billion US dollars each year on R&D. How much of that is actually really going into sustainability and fighting climate change? Actually, all of it because all of it's designed to more safely help farmers get more yield and protect their crops against things like drought or even too much water. So, so things that, that the climate change happens that hurts farmers, we help make them more resilient. But 1.4 billion US dollars for a big company like Syngenta is just peanuts, isn't it? If we look at the uh, takeover uh, by ChemChina of 43 billion US dollars, so there could be much more expenditure on the fight against climate change. Well, it's not just us. It's, it's our, our competitors are doing the same. Our customers are doing the same. People down the value chain, whether it's the grain companies or the food companies. And there are institutes, there are governments, there's NGOs that are working. So I think the big opportunity is that we work together more and more, that we collaborate to find out not the right, just the right technologies for the farmer, but the whole system. How do we reduce waste in the system? How do we incent farmers to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Every year, there are $600 billion given to farmers as subsidies around the world. Why don't we make those encourage greenhouse gas emission reductions, practices that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, carbon credits. Let's give farmers the right to earn more money for sustainable practices that help the world, help the environment. Those kind of changes, in addition to new, new crop protection products, new seeds, can really make a big difference. Now, agriculture is not formally part of the 2015 uh, Paris Climate Agreement, um, but should it be? And why is a multinational like yours actually concerned about climate change? Well, we're concerned about climate change because it impacts the world, <laughs> and we care deeply about the world. And I promise you, if you talk to any of the 28,000 employees of Syngenta, you'll find that the reason they're with Syngenta, the reason they're so passionate, is they want to make a difference to feeding the world safely, but also in an environmentally sustainable way. So we care deeply. So the agriculture impact is so big that we have to solve the agriculture challenges. So we're all committed to that, and we want to, we want to be part of the solution. So that's why we work every day as Syngenta, but also collaborating with other companies to really go after it. And I, I, I agree with you. We weren't part of the official climate change challenge, but we need to be. And we need to set goals for agriculture. In fact, Angela Merkel has challenged agriculture to be carbon neutral in this century. I think that's extremely important. I think we have to set the goals. And there are farms around the world, in some places, using best practices that are, actually have negative carbon now. We can make it happen. 
some uh, critics and environmental activists uh, may counter to that that climate change is actually good business for company like yours because you need to develop new crops and uh, uh, smart crops and new pesticides. Well, climate change is good business for, for solar companies. It's good business for electric car companies. Solving the climate change challenge and making profits, sustainable profits, I think is, is the sustainable way to solve climate change. So let's solve climate change in a way that's economically feasible, that, that works economically and creates more jobs, it creates more research, creates more new ideas. And I think that's, that's the secret. We can have climate change solutions and have a great global economy. Smart crops uh, is a big business now, especially to build resilience against climate change, global warming, and also to boost uh, the input and output uh, for farmers. What is yeah. your outlook for that segment? Well, so I'll give you one example. We, we've created a, a product called artesian corn, and we did it without GMOs. We did it with native breeding by finding corn products in drought situations that did very well. And then we go in and we find out what gene that particular corn product has that makes it resilient to drought. And then we breed that into other corn products around the world, and we create a, 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 a corn product that will have 20% more yield under drought conditions. So that's the kind of thing we need to do. Keep coming out with products that are more resilient to climate change. That takes technology. That takes R&D investment. It takes time. But if we're focused on it, we will make it happen. And that's part of the solution. And how do you make sure that these uh, smart crops and uh, drought-resilient products and so on do not harm the environment when you develop them? We are very strong advocates for strong science-based regulation. So governments, EU, US, China, Brazil, around the world have to have strong regulations, and we, we are proponents of that, have our products all go through the strictest testing to demonstrate safety for the planet and for people. And if we have that, then we, we, and it's understood what, the, what the, the, the criteria are, we'll keep making better and better products for the world and for, for, for safety. I earlier spoke to the executive director of Greenpeace International, Jennifer Morgan, and she basically said the biggest problem is political will. Would you also say that talking to governments is the biggest challenge? Yes, governments have to be part of the solution. Without governments putting in the right regulations and the right goals, it will not happen. But the governments have to put in place the goals and companies <laughs> And NGOs need to work together to support the, 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 the system to make it happen. And for us, it's, it's, it's working with farmers, working with grain companies, working with food companies, food retailers. I even think a really important element here is food companies selling food that is considered environmentally friendly. And if, if, if they can start branding food that has been grown in an environmentally sustainable way, that's another big, big uh, hook to drive growth and, and help save the planet. So what kind of uh, food are you thinking of? Well, any food. So vegetables. We have a big vegetable seed business. We can keep making vegetables taste better, last longer, you know, look nice, and, and, and do that in a way that, that, that more and more are sold. And, and, and areas where drought is a problem, Let's put in the right irrigation systems, the right drip irrigation that only needs a little water to grow healthy vegetables. You have been a big uh, defender of GMO as well. Are you still yeah. on that front? Oh yeah, I, I think GMO is one of the technologies that helps develop crops very safely. You know exactly what you do to a plant when you, when you, when you modify a gene and you can test it. And, and there are GMO products today that have helped farmers go to negative greenhouse gas emissions. So they have to be rigorously tested like any new product, demonstrated safe, which 126 Nobel laureates have signed a letter saying that the GMO products out there today are safe, and this is a very important technology for the world. 
there can be never a zero impact on the environment. And given that Syngenta is such a big multinational, looking at your operations, they're also heavily carbon emitting operations sometimes, heavily polluting. So how in your supply chain can you better cut CO2 emissions? Oh, we, we have aggressive goals. I'll give you an example in our headquarters. I know it's very small, but it's kind of an attitude thing. We now use bottled water. We now use water from, from a glass bottle instead of using plastic bottles. But we think about, in all of our operations, how to keep getting better yields, how to reduce our CO2 emissions in our own operations, and we measure them. But I can tell you we have a much bigger impact by helping farmers do things like don't till the soil, keep the carbon in the soil, increase their yields, stop deforestation start reforesting. We don't want more farmland in the world. We want less. We want to be able to grow the food the world needs safely with less farmland and, and, and more forests. That's critical for climate change control. A lot of NGOs and stakeholders around the world, of course, are critical of uh, Syngenta's operations as well. So how can you better engage them and really create a dialogue that is for the better of the planet? Well, we have to keep reaching out. <laughs> And, and, and talking and getting to know each other and getting to understand. I think when we invite NGOs into Syngenta to talk to our people, they understand that we want to do better for the world. We want, we, 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 in the last 50 years, we have reduced pesticide use by more than 90%. And we've reduced greenhouse gas emissions in farming substantially. On the issue of pesticides, uh, Syngenta is the biggest uh, maker of pesticides in the world. How can you make sure that they don't harm the environment? By keep making them better. By keep making them so that you need less, less use. I told you in the last 50 years we've gone down by 90 percent. Let's keep driving that down by safer chemistries that are more efficacious, that you don't need as much, and helping farmers now with digital technologies imaging technologies, and we bought a, an imaging company last year, see where they need to use them and don't use them where they don't need to use them. So help farmers use less, make more money, and, and do better for the world. And we also spent a lot of money, a lot of effort building into the seed more ability for the plant to resist diseases and to, to, to resist insects so that the plant can protect itself naturally. How do you see the future of uh, sustainability at Syngenta for your company? I see Syngenta as a sustainability company. I think everything that we do needs to be to help farmers farm better in ways that are safe for the farmer, for the consumer, and for the environment. But do it you know, with enough yield that we can stop deforestation. That's what we're all about. That's what we live for. That's what the 1.4 billion in R&D goes for. That's what our thousands of agronomists around the world that teach farmers how to farm better every day, what, what they live for. And then I'll make one other comment. I travel all around the world. Last year I went to 30 countries. The greatest satisfaction I get in my entire career was visiting poor farmers in places like Bangladesh, India, Africa last year, and seeing their faces when we've trained them to grow sustainably, higher yields, better products, better output. Then they can feed their family, their kids go to school, they buy more land, they want to do the right thing for the world, and you lift these people up out of poverty and, and you've got multiple solutions. You, you, you make the world a better place, the economy better for everybody, and you address climate change at the same time. Give you one last example. Africa. Africa can feed itself. And Syngenta and the Syngenta Foundation are 100% committed to helping work with others for Africa to feed itself. Camp China has bought Syngenta and you're now a Chinese company. So what is your expansion plan in China in terms of boosting R&D and business expansion? Yes. This is the biggest impact that Chem China is going to have on Syngenta and it's happening already. They're supporting our growth all around the world and they're supporting us increasing research spending and, 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 and investing in our business, including acquisitions to grow everywhere in the world. 
but in China, where are you focusing on at this point, and do you have any concrete deals in the pipeline? So we, we did four acquisitions in 2018. And this year? One major acquisition in seeds in, 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 in Brazil and Argentina, two digital acquisitions, and one vegetable seed company. This year, we have a nice pipeline, and next year I'll tell you all about what we did. How many deals can we expect this year, and in which geographies? I will say several deals and at least a few in China. A few in China. And that's where, where Chem China has really opened the door. We've had a lot of focus on China for many, many years, but now we're learning how you really can be successful in China. And, and, and our goal is to help lift up Chinese agriculture, but at the same time, expand our business there. In terms of uh, Syngenta operations here in Switzerland, your headquarters is in Basel. Any yes. plans to move it anywhere else? No, not at all. We think Basel in Switzerland is a great place to live and a great place to attract talent from all over the world, including Switzerland, of course, but also a great place to do a global business. You have access to all of Europe here. You wake up in the morning, you, you, you talk to China and Asia, and then the afternoon, the U.S. wakes up in, in, in Brazil, and you talk to them and work with them. And so it's a great place to do business. We, got, we have great support from the Swiss government and the Basel government and I see us here for many, many years to come. And you enjoy living in Basel and skiing in the Alps as well, isn't it? Yes. Before we go, Eric, uh, what about the relisting of Syngenta shares? When we were purchased by ChemChina, the chairman said that he hoped that we would list again within five years or so. Is this still according to plan? I believe we are on track. Great seeing you again, Eric, and uh, have a great WEF here in Davos. Thank you, Martina. Great to see you. Mm -hmm.